Hi everybody, welcome to a new Python tutorial. This time I want to talk about list comprehension. List comprehension provides a concise and elegant way to create lists and every advanced Python programmer should know how to use it. So let's say we want to create a list with some elements. So here we want to create a list with all the squared numbers from zero to four. And of course we can do it like this. So we can say list one equals an empty list. And then we write our typical for loop. So for i in range five here. And then we say list one dot append i times i. So we append the squared element. And now if you print our list one, then we see that of course this worked. But we can also achieve the same thing in just one line. So we can write list two equals and now we use list comprehension and here we write i times i for i in range 5 and now if you print our list 2 then we see that this did the same thing so this worked and this is much shorter so much more concise and now let's talk about list comprehension in general. So the typical syntax is our new list equals and then in brackets, we have our expression and then we have the for loop. And this is for member in iterable. And now our iterable can be any iterable. So it can be a range object, but it can also be a list or a set or a generator object. So it's very flexible. And we can also um, have a very flexible expression here. So let's say this expression here at the beginning is very complex. So if, if it's very simple, then we can just write it here. But let's say we want to have a very complex operation. So we want to get the cubes. So of course, this is also very simple, but let's pretend uh, this is a very um, complex operation here. Then we can write a function for this. So we can write define cube, which gets one element. And then here we return i times i times i. And then we say our new list with all the cubes equals. And then in the expression, we just call this function with one element. And then we loop over this. So for i in, and let's say here range five. And now if you print the cubes, then we see that this worked. So we can write a function for this expression. And our list comprehension um, can also have an optional if conditional at the end. So here it can have if conditional and this will filter the elements. So let's say we want to get all the even numbers between zero and 20. Then we can say evens equals and now in the brackets we say it's i. So we put the element for i in range 20. And now we say if i modulo 2 equals equals 0. So only if this is true, then it will put this expression into the list. So now if you print the evens, then um, if i modulo 2 equals equals 0, sorry, now if we print the events, then we see that it filtered this iterable and just put in the even numbers into our list. So this is how we can use uh, filtering with list comprehension. But we can also write the if conditional um, in the middle. So we can say expression. And here we have an if else conditional. If else conditional. So this is also optional. And this will just modify our, um, our elements. So this will not filter them. 
So let's say we have one list a equals, let's say we have a list here with numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now we say b equals and now we want to modify the numbers um, smaller than four and set them to zero and we leave the rest as it is. So we can do that like this. So um, we have our list here, our brackets, and then we say zero if i is smaller than four, else we just put i, and then again our for loop, so for i in a, and now if we print b, then we see that it modified all the elements uh, smaller than four. So yeah, we see that our list comprehension is very flexible, but it's also very concise, very short. And yeah, so you should definitely know how to use it. And now of course list comprehension or it also works for other data types. So it also works for sets and dictionaries. So let's have a look at how this works. So let's say we have a quote equals with a string. So let's say this contains hello, everybody. And now we want to have all the unique vowels. And we can do it like this. So we can use a set with braces. And then we say we have the same um, syntax here. So expression for member in iterable. So we say I for I in quote, if I in all the vowels. So A E I O U. And now if we print the vowels, we have the unique vowels here. So we don't have any element um, more than one time because this is how our set is working. So set is only unique elements. And yeah, and of course, it also works with dictionaries. So if we want to have a dictionary with squared numbers, so we say squared equals, and now we use the dictionary syntax. So first we put in the key. So as key, we want to have the normal uh, element, so I, and as value, we want to have the squared value. So here we say I times I. And then again, our for loop, so for I in range five. And now if we print squared, then we see that we have a dictionary now with all the values as key and the squared values as value. So yeah, this is how it works with other data types. And now let's quickly talk about nested list comprehension because we can also do a nested list comprehension. Um, so let's say this is typically used when you want to have a 2D matrix. So let's say matrix 2D equals and now we have the first the outer list comprehension. And now we have an inner list comprehension. So here we have I, let's say I times J, and then four. And here we only loop over the first member. So for I in range five. And then in the outer um, list comprehension, we loop over the second member. So here we say for J in range, let's say only three. Um, and now if you print our matrix 2D, then we see that we have a list of lists. So a two dimensional array. And yeah, so this is also possible. But yeah, it might be very confusing. So I won't recommend to use nested list comprehension, but you just should know that it is possible. And yeah, let's 
also talk about um, when we should not use list comprehension because uh, list comprehension is very nice, but it works by loading the entire output list into our memory. And so this can get a very large object. And sometimes it's better to use a generator for this. So let's say we have a list. Let's say um, this has, has squared numbers, i times i for i in range. And now let's say this is a very large object. So let's say range 1000. And now if you want to print this or we want to calculate the sum over this list and we can do it with a built in sum function. So sum and let's store this in an element s s and now let's print our s then this is our sum so this worked but this needs a lot of 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 uh, memory here so and the better way to do this is to do it with a um generator and we can also use generator expressions which uses parentheses instead of brackets and this will do the same thing but it will um, create a generator object here instead of a list object so now if we print this then we see that we get the same result and but now let's have a look at the size of both of these objects so let's say we have our list object equals and now here we use list comprehension and now let's say we have our generator object which is the same thing but with parentheses and now let's get the size so for this we can import sys so let's import sys and then let's print and here we can use the function sys dot get size of and here we want to get the size of our list and we also want to get the size of our generator object then we see that our list is much larger so this is the size in bytes here and now let's imagine that our uh, iterable here is even more big then the difference here would be even bigger so yeah also keep in mind that sometimes generator expressions are the better way and now at the end let's also have a quick word about speed so a lot of times list comprehension uh, can be faster but this might not always be the case so you should always test your code if you want to uh, um, improve the speed so let's say let's time our function so let's say from time it import default timer as timer as timer and now let's first try it with a list comprehension so let's say a equals and now let's say we want to have the squared numbers again i times i for i in range and now let's use a very large number so let's say 1 million 1 million and by the way these underscores is a very nice little trick that we can use so this will still be a integer but now we can better see what number it is and now let's time this so we can say start equals timer and also here then after our list comprehension we say end equals timer and then we print end minus start so this will print the time it took from here to here and now let's do the same thing but now let's use uh, a typical for loop so here we have a equals this is our empty array 
and then we loop so we say for i in range and we had one million here and then we say a, a dot append i times i so now let's run this so we print first we print the time of how long it took with list comprehension and then with our classical for loop and so I have a little typo here um, a dot append let's run this one more time so yeah so here we see that um, the for loop took nearly twice as much time so a lot of times list comprehension can be faster but like I said this might not always be this case so test it for yourself but yeah that's all I wanted to show you about list comprehension and I hope you like it and understood everything if you like it please subscribe to the channel and see you next time bye